Tech, tech, technology. Climate change is a big deal. It is a fact. It is happening. It is man-made. And we need to address it. We're not going to, of course, but we need to. The biggest problem isn't that Seattle will now have weather like San Diego. The problem is that uh, many places historically ripe for human settlement will become uninhabitable. So uh, let's take, for example, Florida. The mean sea level is something like uh, 50 feet. A rise of a few feet will wipe out most of the coastal areas. Now, those people have to go somewhere. Sure, they can go to Georgia, although Georgia's running low on water. They can go to Texas, although Texas is running low on water. They can go a lot of places. But that's that's not the real problem. The problem is we get most of our oranges from Florida, and those uh, orangeries, which is, they don't call them orchards. I don't know if you know that, but they call them orangeries. They're not groves. The orangeries will be wiped out. Well, you know, the rain's falling somewhere, we'll just plant it there. Right. Yeah, now it's falling in the desert. What was it? uh, Lebanon or Egypt recently had 20 years worth of rain in four days. You can't exactly get oranges out of that. No, what you get is flooding and death. And climate refugees. So you look at places where crops are growing great now. They lose rain they lose crops. You look at places that are arid now that are going to get rain, that's not fertile soil. You can't just up and move entire, an entire industry. All of agriculture cannot relocate in 20 years. It can't be done. I mean, anything can be done, but we're talking space race times 10. We're talking the global effort of World War II just to save our species. And we're not going to build a wall around Florida. Although, I do recommend it. I really think we should build a wall around Florida. So, to put it in perspective, let's look at the Syrian refugee crisis. As of October 15th, 4.2 million refugees have fled and been accepted into other countries. Now, that's, that's, that's a lot of people. But it's a fraction of what you'd get in a climate crisis. 4.2 million people has caused huge turmoil. A lot of countries are taking people, and they're so difficult to resettle because, it, you know, how do you add 100,000 people to a country? Just even housing them temporarily until they get resettled. Does your country have a million free homes available? A million more jobs available? Translator services to even talk to a million new people? And if you're looking at places like Africa, if you have to resettle a continent, you're in trouble, my friend. So, with the refugee crisis of 4 million, let's uh, take a look over here real quick. Uh, According to Lord Stern, who is a bit of a global warming alarmist, but his predictions have not been without merit. He says hundreds of millions to even billions of climate refugees may emerge by 2050. That's a lot of people. If you were asked, can you take just one person in your home and support them until they get on their feet? Most people would say, no, I just can't do it. I am so broke, I can't do it. But let's say the other half do. In America, there's, what, uh, 70 million households? So half of that, that, okay, we can take 35 million people. That's not enough. That's not enough. 35, we've got, we're talking hundreds of millions or billions of people who've been displaced. Can't be done. So we're going to see, we're going to see a fight over scarce resources that hasn't been imagined in modern human history save for perhaps on the uh, e- on Easter Island when they farm themselves into exist out of existence well into existence and then back out of it to be fair so yeah hundreds of millions billions that's crazy and this is stuff we will see in our lifetimes assuming we're not 
living on the edge. And nothing's going to be done about it. That's my prediction. This will happen. It is already happening. And there are no serious steps to reverse the trend. There are countries who are pledging to slow down pollution. Great. I pledge, rather than killing our species off in a generation, we'll make it happen in a generation and a half. Ah, oh, so noble. No, no, two, three generations, three. No one's reversing the trend. Everyone's just agreed to accelerate it more slowly. And in terms of who's taken how many refugees, this is kind of fun. Uh, Turkey's taken in 2.1 million refugees. Lebanon's taken in 2 million. Jordan's taken in 1.4 million estimated with over 600,000 actually registered. And how many has Israel taken in? This one's a fun one. Israel has refused to offer any resettlement places to Syrian refugees. Benjamin Netanyahu said, We will not allow Israel to be submerged by a wave of illegal migrants and terrorist activists. <sighs> and for fun, how about this quote? <laughs> this is out of Israel. What would your answer be if some outside agency told you that you must accept in America many millions of utter strangers in your midst, even uh, enough to dominate your country, merely because they insisted on going to America? Uh, the rate of increases has been terrifying. In a few more years, unless stopped now, it will overwhelm us and we shall be nothing more than an important minority in our own home. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That is not from Israel. No, that wasn't Benjamin Netanyahu talking on those last two. That was from King Abdullah bin Al Hussein, the uh, Emir of uh, Jordan. He was the he was the King of Jordan, uh, and that was him talking about Israel's emigrating into Palestine. So the Israelis aren't taking refugees, I guess, because they know that within a few generations they would be the majority. And they would not treat you well. I just think these things need to be kept in perspective. So yeah, climate refugees, be on the lookout.